the the uh, knowledge as a non-rival good. Like it's the question is what can you accomplish with the knowledge, and and I think that's really important when we're thinking about uh, non-rival goods. It's more what does the knowledge enable, and that's valuable. Uh, and this is totally a different thing than attention. It's true, attention is valuable. Um, and that's interesting. Attention is was a way, I think, to reintroduce rivality in the non-material economy. Yeah. Because attention's uh, rival. <laughs> the 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 concept we're, we're dancing around is there's, you know, people have said, oh, there's a thing called attention economy and advertisers are vying for your attention as a rival good. And, um, you know, and you ought to be compensated for your attention and yada, yada. Um, a lot of that is economizing uh, um, being human rather than economizing, you know, exchanging rival goods. Uh, so, so it, it's it's kind of deep and bad, um, like like you said, Stacy. It's you know, but but I. It's interesting to hear you say that many people would agree with me that. Um, valuing attention as a rival good is is a good uh, or not as a rival good is a is a good thing. It's a, a lot of people would say, oh yeah, my attention you know costs me time and money, and um, you know I want to be paid in time and money. Or or Facebook is absorbing my attention, you know, and they're gaining you know economic value from that and all that. It's it's um, it's a, a bad and slippery slope. So oh. attention is really people being in connection with each other, right? And when, when, and I, I value that, but I don't value that in the same way that um, I exchange, you know, $4 for a cabbage or something like that. Um, it's, it's not money value, it's human um, uh, connection. Well, I'm also looking at it from the other way. So like we want to educate people, we want to give them knowledge, but then we want to make them pay for it Why? with their attention and with their money. No, <laughs> but that but but well, that is what winds up happening. Um, yeah, I, it's yeah, broken. Yeah, That's we, how we got into this mess. But the, <laughs> and that's my <laughs> point. Yeah, I'm not I, sure. I, you, are that. you disagreeing really? <laughs> But Mark, Mark Antoine, I, I'm saying, are you really disagreeing? I'm not not clear to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't see much disagreement actually between what you're saying, right? Everyone's saying like attention, a, uh, an economy built on attention only, which is really not about you and really about your eyeballs that you know feed advertising, right? <laughs> like, but is not good. So. Right. I was put, I put in the chat engagement, like what I, when we're maybe using a different word also helps, right. Just going, if, if we value engagement that comes with it, that we, even that word to me comes with it, a completely different perspective on it. Now we're valuing the person for what they're, what, you know, what they're motivated to engage. It could also lead, for instance, like if you contribute to the community and the community values what you contributed, I think both pieces have to be in there then there's an there can be an exchange for that. So the exchange could be for what you've contributed and the value that's held by the community rather than you just being present or us shoving stuff at you. <laughs> like, right, right so now it's the, the, the flow of funds is based on time, right? And how much stuff you know, you're paying for the stuff we dump onto you. What if we paid you for the stuff that you sense made and contribute back to the community? Um, I like the way this is uh, progressing. I've been thinking that um, human beings need um, a better uh, motivation uh, or a better better direction to motivate us in with uh, currency. Um, attention, um, engagement. I want to strengthen the sense of benefit. If, if 
two people meet and or or somebody sees an advertisement and the result of that meeting benefits that person then uh i know this is kind of ridiculous and i'm, I'm crazy for suggesting it but i love this idea of uh, giving um some kind of newfangled money to the person who created that benefit uh, at the moment the benefit occurred and we have the technology to do this but i'm only suggesting it here because hey this is a good topic or, or one dear to my heart and i'm kind of sleepy so i'm not <laughs> speaking very well <laughs> benefit if people were rewarded for benefit, they would create a lot more benefit than we currently do. We grouch at each other and um, <clears throat> our pet, a rivalrous in a petty manner. I think it would be wonderful to uh, motivate that away or, or at least, you know, diminish it a bit. I, I, I'd like to have use cases uh, in the sense, what is, what is it exactly concretely we want to make a living from? Uh, I think a lot of the attention economy started because people were writing articles, which is a form of sense making. And uh, they found that the only way to monetize those articles was publicity and atten the attention economy. So. I think a use case is being paid for uh, writing useful, but but here I think the engagement metric that Wendy proposed is really interesting because what's the measure of a good article, one that adds value to the community? Is it grabbing attention or is it uh, engaging in a way that, you know, other people are part of the conversation, it's constructive and the, uh, there's a whole conversation around it. And another use case I'd like us to think about besides the journalist, because that's what we're talking about. Are we paying for journalists? Are we paying for things which are public goods? And uh, are we paying for things which are have potential value? I mean, the whole, uh, one of the most intelligent pro uh, DAO pro crypto articles I read was about how it enables people to pay for things before they have immediate value so that they might take the time to accrue value. And I'm not sure it convinces me on the crypto thing, but certainly that is a use case. Uh, we need to be able to pay for things before they add value. And for that matter, I think no discussion of economy should not take into account uh, the fact that the real continuation of the human race depends on economically meaningless activities, such as having children, teaching them. Um, it's not, it's absolutely essential and vital, but it's not, if you think of it in terms of, I get something from what I invest, it's absurd. Uh, so economy is the wrong measure. That's all <laughs> that shows. Uh, you, a lot of the real economy is actually so-called gift economy, economy for which services are rendered with no hope of getting value out of there. And that's fine. I mean, it's not fine that you can't make a living raising children. That's a problem, but it's fine that this has not been captured by the economic capitalist cycle, despite their worst efforts with uh, test tube babies and surrogate motherhood and all that. Over. Uh, Stacy, uh, thanks for getting us started. Um, this is a great conversation, I think. Um, I, I value it. Um, uh, so I wanted to to kind of there's um, there's a couple value has two meanings and when we start talking about money and finance and economy um, 
we start talking about a trick that humans have figured out in the past, I don't know, a few thousand years, where it's like, um, uh, um, well, let me back up. Uh, so there's there's value as importance. Like um, this this uh, this conversation has is valuable to me, um, and then there's value as a commodity. Um, so that's when I pay three dollars for a coffee or six dollars or whatever. I don't buy coffee. Um, so valuing something as a commodity is 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 an invention, right? Saying that um, hey, if 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 you give me two cows, I'll give you three pigs. Or if you give me two cows, I'll give you uh, six bronze, bronze pieces. Um, or if you give me two cows, I'll give you a hundred bucks, right? That's a trick and it's a commoditization of, of value. And, and then in the past, you know, a couple thousand years, we've wound up thinking that that's the only way that you can value something or one of the, the, maybe not the only way, the, the strongest way you can value something. I will give you an hour of my time for $100. And, you know, it's a, it's a very, very poor and very non-human uh, way to, to count value. So it's super valuable when I need a million tons of grain and I figure out how many dollars I would pay you for, for that versus, you know, somebody else's grain and talk about quality of the grain and stuff like that. So it's a useful tool, but it's, um, I was gonna say wrong, I'll, 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 I won't say wrong. It's very dangerous to think that human activity and human connection is essentially a commodity because then you end up in all kinds of weird places, right? Why is my hour worth a hundred dollars and her hour is worth two hundred dollars? You know, um, there's different kinds of value and and import and context and stuff like that. Um, so, um, we when so so it's tempting to say you know something like my attention is worth time. I want to participate in an attention economy. I want to sell you my attention or I want to give you my attention, but then I want to get value back from it. And I'm going to count that value as a commodity. All of that stuff is, it's, it's dangerous. It's close to evil, right? It's, it's, it's using a tool um, that's super valuable when I'm working in steel or you know, cubic feet of natural gas or whatever. Um, it's a tool for that. When you use that tool on people, it's sharp and, you know, wrong. Um, it it it's dangerous. It it hurts people. It misvalues things. It means that a teacher's hour is worth twenty five dollars, and a computer developer's hour is worth one hundred twenty five dollars, and it's just stupid, right? It's like really stupid. And then and then we on top of that we invent things like. Um, uh, thinking about decisions in dollar terms rather than human terms. And we, and we um, in the past couple hundred years, we invented uh, ways of making money just with money. And, you know, that's, it just drives weird stuff. And, and um, you get hedge funds buying up companies and, and dismembering them for parts rather than creating value as importance in the economy, right? Um, so Mark Antoine uh, used a fancy economic term, which I want to make sure that we kind of touch on real quick, um, val uh, rival goods versus non-rival goods. Um, and that just means uh, a rival good is something that there's kind of a, a set number of, and nobody can own, own it um, in multiple copies, right? Um, if, there, if I have a head of cabbage, um, I have it and you don't have it. If I give it to you, I don't have it anymore. So that's rivalrous, it's called. It just means that one of us can have it, but not both at the same time. Um, knowledge, information, and even to some extent, connection and attention are, are non-rivalrous, right? Um, uh, if, if I'm giving you attention, it's not like I'm using up the attention, my attention. And it's even dangerous to think I'm using up my time, right? You and I are creating something together that has a different kind of value. So you know, thinking that I'm, 
I'm spending an hour with you um, rather than I'm creating value by, by human connection. Um, it's, it, it ends up in that dangerous kind of, you know, kind of thing. So, um, so then uh, we've, we've also invented with copyright and uh, license fees and stuff like that. We've invented the idea that um, culture and information and knowledge can be considered a rival good. Like if I buy a Kindle book, um, uh, Amazon gave me a copy for that cop, a, a license for that particular copy of it, and I can't give it to you. All of that is just an invention, right? It's it's a way that publishers um, e extract money from the movement of information. And that's kind of a good thing when, when authors can eat. It's kind of a bad thing when publishers get rich. Um, so pretending that an ebook is a rival good, it's, it's a tool and kind of an interesting use of a tool and a kind of a misuse of a tool. Um, it means that that information we've humanity has hoarded it into places where, you know, um, we, we were pretending it's a pound of sugar rather than human knowledge that kind of would be good if everybody used it and everybody would get lifted up by it, right? So, um, uh, good enough for now. Thanks. <laughs> um, Pete, what, what do you, what would be a human uh, solution. You said, uh, I can't remember your exact words, but you said something about it's just not very human. Yeah. But what um, would be a human? You know, the, the funny thing is it's human in a meta way. Um, humans, I, it, I think it's really, I, I have a, I, I value the art and skill of humans to make tools and use tools. So I think that's a human thing. And when you're using the concept of money, um, as, especially to manage rival goods and you know allocate resources and stuff like that, I, I think that's a, a human thing to do. Um, but when you turn around and start valuing people as rival goods and money and their attention and their time and stuff like that, it's so one of the one of the tricks we started to uh, um, started to invent. 20 years ago or something like that. And Kevin actually, Kevin Jones was a big part of this, was um, uh, like about 20 years, 15 years ago, we came up with, with something called triple bottom line. Um, so instead of just making profit, maybe we could have a, a balance sheet for a company that's um, people, planet, profit, right? How are people in, um, uh, benefiting in the community? Um, how is the planet benefiting from or, or not benefiting? How is it how is it getting destroyed by your actions? So for the longest time, um, when you know we invented capitalism and then we said, okay, so uh, you win or lose based on how much money you've got, right? How much just capital. Um, and so the idea of, of things like triple bottom line, there's a couple of names for it, was the idea that let's use that accounting mechanism of, of value um, and we'll use it but, but we won't just count money, we'll also count you know, benefit to people and benefit to planet. Um, uh, kind of as soon as, as soon as I learned about that, it's like, well, actually three is an interesting, you know, three is a lot better than one. Uh, we're, we're starting to realize that there's different kinds of value that a company might create or destroy. Um, but there's probably a lot more than that, right? Um, so I, it, it never caught on. I thought we would end up with lots, multi, multi vari, uh, variable uh, bottom lines. Uh, we haven't really. Um, I think, so since I'm reading Dawn of Everything, Dawn of Everything kind of informs me um, a little. Um, the, uh, um, uh, different cultures throughout time and geography have, have valued things in different ways. Um, and maybe they had a money system, but there was a lot of the, so, so back to your, your question, Jonathan, thank you. It's a good question. Um, 
uh, a lot of cultures value their nobody in their community being hungry, for instance. Um, and I think that's a really human thing to do, right? In our country, uh, because of the way we do bean counting, it's like, well, you know, I'm walking past a person, that person hasn't been able to eat for three days. And it's like, mm, it would cost me money to make sure that they're fed, you know? Um, and, and, you know, then I can go to my, my uh, local representatives, my government officials and say, you know, can't we allocate some of the city budget to, you know, feeding these people who aren't being fed? And they're like, well, it would cost money, you know? And so um, some of the cultures that the Dawn of, Dawn of Everything talks about, uh, uh, Graeber and Wengro talk about, it's, it's like, you guys are freaking insane if you think that a community member should be hungry, right? It's like, well, <laughs> you know, that's like, so, so in that way, um, that's, that's an example. I, I could probably think of, you know, we could think of a lot more. Um, uh, uh, kind of where I started with this was, you know, attention economy versus uh, if you don't think of your attention as a rival good, as you th if you think of it as a creative effort um, that you participate with other people, I think that's a human way to do it, right? Um, uh, valuing connection, valuing people learning, um, and, then, and then understanding that that's a qualitative thing and a, an emotional thing I, I sense you know I, I, I don't count up the amount of value that we created during this call in you know minutes or hours or ideas or things like that it's like emotionally how do I feel how do I feel like uh, the, the other people in this call felt um, where have we traveled to you know kind of in our in our thinking and our, our ability to understand and and modulate ourselves better and approach the world better and help other people in the world right all of that stuff is really fuzzy and qualitative. And, and it's not something that I want to reduce to a number, you know, um, usually. I mean, there are actually cases, I, they're um, reducing things to numbers. Um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit away from money here, but uh, it's, it's another thing that people do, right? Um, uh, you know, how did you, how do you judge the innovation of this meeting, you know, at the end of it? How do you, you know, what, what's your feeling on a scale from zero to, to 10? Um, reducing things to a number is, a, is another useful tool, but when we do it, um, when we do it, we have to be super careful to do it humanly, humanely, um, and it's often not done. So um, thanks for the question. Michael's hand has been up for a really, really, really long time, and he was skipped over a few times. Thanks, Stacey. Sure. Um, no, I mean, it was, you know, I, it, it, Jonathan was asking a question of, of Pete from his hand up, so I, I got it. But I am, I am kind of brimming with, like, stuff to stay on this issue. This is... I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get coherent sentences out. This is this is so much my my jam. <laughs> um, you know, there there was something that um, there there was something that my parents taught me when I was a little kid that I that I loved. Two things actually. I mean, one was that um, you know here's your allowance and every time you part with it, you're voting. You know, you're voting for more of that thing in the world, not just getting the thing that it gets you. Um, and so, you know, do think about the fact that, that you don't just get a piece of candy, you vote for more candy in the world and people wouldn't be healthy if there was just more and more candy and not other things. And so just, just keep it in mind, you know, not like you can't get candy, but just keep it in mind. Um, and the other thing was they wanted to sleep late on Saturday mornings and they told us, when you're watching the cartoons, there are these little things called commercials and commercials are there to trick you into 
like wanting things that you don't really need. And they, you know, talk a lot about the good stuff and then they talk really softly and quickly about the bad stuff. Batteries not included. Blah, 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 blah. So just, just kind of take note of that. And so like when they woke up at noon or whatever, we would say, they said batteries not included six times, you know, uh, that, you know, and that was like, we felt like that was our job to observe that. So like being aware that, um, that we are voting for more of things with our attention and, and our clicks, I mean, clicks are kind of the new dollars, you know, and, and like you think, oh, I'm not paying anything. It doesn't hurt anything if I click on the salacious, you know, Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, you know, like clip. Um, well, actually you're, you're doing a lot right there. You're both spending your time and attention which could be better used in a more productive way. And you're like getting Facebook or whatever platform this information is being presented on another screen view which they can sell an ad against which is money for them that you're not getting that in many cases the creator of of the content isn't getting um and you're saying let's make let's make this model let's make more of this model and we've we've done it to the effect that we have made the model of information access for ourselves into ad supported clickbait and the best wh whatever is the most effective in gaining more clicks is the content there is the most of and of course that's not what we would call the highest quality content it's just the most engaging content and we're i mean I i'm worried that like we're, I mean, I, I think that we need to be more conscious that we are, Pete, when you were saying, when you're like interacting with an in, another individual and you're connecting with that person, you're not, you know, paying attention, but I would say you certainly are, and you're, you're paying attention that you could be paying elsewhere. You're, doing much more valuable, you're getting much more value for the attention you're paying than if you're sitting back and, you know, you know, slack mouthed at some engaging <laughs> content. Um, and, and so. So it, the, my question is, am I paying or am I participating in importance? Well, so am I, am I paying, you know, uh, paying for a commodity? The, the trick is using that word paying puts mm -hmm. us in economic mindset, right? Sure. Um, but I, the only reason I, I think it's okay to use paying is that your attention and your time are finite and they can either lead to like, I mean, you could, I mean, you could commodita commoditize yourself in many ways. You could say like, you know, if you wrung me out for the water contained in my body and you know purified it and distilled it and put it in plastic bottles on a shelf it would be worth you know 5.99 or whatever you know that's that's a way of commoditizing yourself your finite self but not I, a wise I, one i i think um attention is it's again dangerous, I think, to think that attention is finite. Um, uh, it, it's kind of like you know, is is love uh, to 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 sharpen the the point? Is love finite, or do we get more love by loving? Right. Sure. Um, sure. When I'm I, participating I mean... in an interesting thing and 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 we're having a great conversation, my attention doubles or triples. Right. I get more attention by. Well, by participating the value you're deriving for that from that is is i mean you're 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 getting more traction with your attention than if your attention i mean you know i, I only mean the attention is finite in the sense that the time 
time time is finite. Waking, the waking hours you have to use your attention is finite, and you can spend time without any attention. I suppose you know you. I'm, maybe you'd argue that that meditation in its best state is like <laughs> you know yeah. not not paying attention while you're spending time, um, but. Uh, but the time being finite, um, I, I guess I'm using attention as a pretty much a surrogate for, for time and that fruitful time spent, fruitful attention spent, you're right, is additive. And, and you know, at the same time, if you're interacting with somebody, you are both paying attention and being paid attention. You know, the, the video of, of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard is not paying you attention. You know, so, so, it's, so it's a bad exchange of, inten- of attention and it's not additive and it's not rich and it's not, you know, like love, love creating more love. It's, I, it's I, I, think, um, I, I think if you think about it, uh, attention is not a time... You, you would you don't measure I wouldn't measure attention in time um, and it's it's a trick of the, the same people who invented the phrase attention economy uh, attention economy says attention equals dollars and dollars equals time right um, I attention to me is a lot more like love um, uh, it's it's flexible um, yeah. you know spending two hours of, of meditating uh, maybe you know maybe that's an infinite amount of attention, right? Or more of zero amount of attention. I, I couldn't tell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but okay, then cool. a, a, attention. So if we say attention is more like engagement, to use Wendy's word, um, attention and engagement are things that, you know, expand and contract. They're, they're um, uh, you know, 10 minutes uh, in a really interesting conversation makes it so that I can spend another 10 minutes in continuing the conversation, right? Um, five, three minutes of watching Amber Heard and, and Johnny Depp on, on YouTube, you know, it's like, okay, now I have to like go take a walk. I, I have zero attention, right? Or something like that. But the, it's, it's really, it's flexible and, and multiplicative in a way that time or grains of rice or something you know pounds is is not and i and i think sure. putting them together okay. is i mean is I, that I, think, same attention I think kind of thing. i think what you're saying and what i'm i mean it's it's a semantic violently agree. maybe maybe i shouldn't use the word attention i'm using attention and <coughs> engagement in the sense that you know the the industry uses attention and engagement and and sells it and so they're commoditizing it. You're right that well-used attention is multiplicative and 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 good. Um, but I mean, it it still it underlines to me then what I'm saying that like you know don't spend it here where you're you're you know you're commoditizing the water wrung out of your body you're just it, you're making it just a kind of flat commodity that doesn't bring you anything back spend it here where it where it's richer and and deeper and and gives you gives you more um so whatever i i, I agree with that except for the spend part right well okay so <laughs> you use um, it to decide uh, to participate uh, invest yeah, it, use it. Uh, whatever yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's a whatever. mind virus the 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 um uh capitalism and and um you know uh, homo economists and all that kind of stuff it's a mind virus and yeah. i'm 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 pushing it a little bit to make a okay. point or to 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 be an ass or something like that i i don't mean to be an ass i'm sorry michael but um i think i think i also distracted you from maybe there was another kind of point that you were you were getting around there which is time is actually finite um so you do spend time um and and invest time this this like the 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 ad supported content like model um and the idea that every time the, the, you know, two terrible things are happening most of the time that we sit down in front of a screen. 
um, and you know this this being accept, accepted, which is good. I mean, this like speaks to your you know good use of of attention. Um, but you know somebody is trying to get us to spend time on something, either spend time on something that we didn't really intend to spend time on or wouldn't really choose to spend time on if we weren't, you know, it's, it's, it's temptation. And B, they're like, <laughs> like taking down all the information about exactly what we're doing and what, what has that effect on us for the purposes of having that effect even more effectively, you know, the next time we sit down at that screen. Like, you know, here, you might be interested in this. And, um, you know, the, I mean, I, I know I'm like not telling you guys anything you don't know, I'm sorry. Um, but it, it's, the, I guess the control of one's focus and time and attention is to me more of a right than you know, if there's anything that needs to be legislated, it's not all this stuff about like moderation and stuff. It's literally the idea that like, I have the right to my own attention and, and I have the right to know, <laughs> to know the stuff that can be derived about myself so that I can use myself, my, my skills, my love, my attention, the most effectively for myself. And that there are forces that are like, literally aimed at thwarting you in doing that <laughs> is yeah. pretty tragic. Um, and, and, and seems to me like something that is, uh, you know, that, that there's some evil that, um, that maybe you know certainly we can we can going going back to uh, um, Wendy's point yesterday about making change. I mean, there's certainly ways that we can be different about it, um, but also need to push toward changes being made in the way the economy works um, because we're getting secondary effects even if we're not participating. Um, anyway, sorry, but there's my. Word spew. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Yes, yeah, so I just want to bring in stuff that's been happening in the chat um, and bring in a point I was bringing up earlier with um, like services, right? So separating the idea of services, which I think is where you were going, Michael, too. Maybe I'm just phrasing it a little bit differently, but I'm agreeing with what, you, what you're getting at, I think, which is, you know, commodities stuff, right? And then services, like humans providing services to each other, or the government providing services to humans, or you know, whatever, right? And the services to me are 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 where the com where this conversation is. That's the way I'm phrasing it in my head is, you know, services we're providing. And what kind of value do we have? And I'm suggesting that if the value is one, at least one, if not most of the measurements of the value of that service is in how well it affects human flourishing or how well it affects human well-being, that that would, those measurements would be a much better way about, of making decisions based on policies or rules or laws or, right, things like that, which really don't, those, those, those aspects don't even come into the decision-making process often, but they are starting to, they're definitely you know, GDH is out there and some com some uh, countries are starting to use GDH as a way and have been for, for a decade, uh, have been using it as a way to, um, to make decisions. Um, and it does have a huge outcome in terms of people's, um, it, it actually costs less in the long term to make decisions based on those things, because then you don't, you, you the, the system is designed to pick up on symptoms of lack of, you know, of well-being. So the lack of well-being doesn't become crisis before, and then the system has to pay a lot more to fix the crisis than it does to, to perpetuate well-being, right? And just the 
the impact of that kind of thinking, that kind of feedback on health, on education, on, I mean, just every sector of society is huge. So I think that would be an interesting, you know, furthering of our conversation. Um, and I'm going to put a quote in the chat right now, um, which um, came from one of my teachers, where attention goes, energy flows, right? So when we're talking about attention, um, I used to use this quote in, in parenting classes, right, to help parents understand that most of what kids are looking for is connection. And that if they can't get the connection the way they want, they'll create a ruckus to get to get attention because some sort of attention is better than no attention. So recognizing parents like where you put your attention matters. So what happens if you start putting your attention on the things that your child is doing that's good, which often gets no comment whatsoever? What if you actually start commenting on that? What happens? And generally what happens is the kid starts doing more of it because they want the attention and now you've given them a perfect excuse to get attention in ways that you actually want them to be doing right so you're reinforcing the behavior makes common sense but we often don't run things that way we often don't make decisions based on that kind of stuff another example much more complex my mom went through a bunch of surgeries um, over a seven to ten year period and in that time period was at yale new haven hospital yale new haven's uh medical system um, here in Connecticut, um, took over Bridgeport Hospital where she was getting all these done. So there were a few surgeries before they took over and there were a few surgeries after, after they took over. And the difference between, the, between before and after was dramatic. And the main thing they did when they took over is put in a survey that surveyed people when they left of what their experience was like and what went wrong and what went right and all those kinds of things. And they improved things based on this, on these surveys. And instead of me having like panicking, having to be in the hospital to advocate for my mom's health, I could visit her for 15 minutes and know she was well taken care of. I mean, the complete 180. So I'm just saying, right, whatever decisions that that, that, that feedback loop created for the medical system um, completely changed everything um, about the way they were operating. And I'm guessing they became more profitable because it's been a working model that they've been working with now for, you know, for, for 10 years or whatever. So anyway, I'm just, I'm throwing this in as, as another kind of slice and maybe a, maybe somewhat of a summary of what we've been talking about as a, as a contribution back um, to, to this very rich and awesome conversation. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I just want to apologize. <laughs> I, I started this conversation. I want to apologize for Pete. I didn't mean to cut you off and I really loved what you had to say. I was just watching Michael for so long and I knew he had so much to say and it was, it was killing me. And I want to apologize to Vincent because I'm getting the sense this is not the conversation he wanted to have. And I do hope we continue this at another time elsewhere. So, oh, and I just want to very quickly, you know, Michael was lucky enough to have parents that gave him that information about the commercials. And I guess I'm really concerned in making sure that people that don't have parents that can give them that information, get that information. So that's where, when I think of Kevin and the way he looks at community, I feel like I'm in alignment there, but more with information. Thank you. My, my friend on that front, my friend's a, um, my best friend's a uh, middle school teacher and she, she's a science teacher. But one time she said to her class, you guys all know you're walking around um, giving free advertising to every, to all these places that you're wearing t-shirts for and that you spent a lot of money to put that t-shirt on your body to walk around and give them free advertising. You know that, right? just she was just having fun like just lobbing that in there and all of a sudden the number of uh the number of every all the kids went ah oh, like i don't oh right it's so important little things like that right and i just want to say if they were given that shirt for free and they needed a shirt to wear i have no problem with that because at least that's balancing it out and that's all i'm looking to do balance things out a bit but instead they paid a premium for it right 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 <laughs> which was her, which was very true in that room. Yes. <laughs> I, I got to run everybody. I'm going to we'll say bye. So nice to see everyone.
I, um, I'm away next week. I'll see you in two. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> More um, on that topic? Other topics? I, I um, wanted to throw something in. The word thrive um, comes to mind. You know, a gross global thriving of human beings. I, if, I think most of us wouldn't be surprised if that number was really low. Um, and I, I would love to see that be raised. And I, what kind of force could we invent that would raise it? I, that's what we all work on, right? That's what I work on every day for oh, you know, oh, this cool. network. All right. Um, then uh, I, I guess I'm working on it too. Yeah. I, I want to mention um, uh, thriveability as a word um, that my friend uh, Jean Russell was pushing. Um, she, she kind of, I, I mean, it's a generic word, but she kind of pushed it into being um, a thing. I like it. And, I, um, and it was also, a reaction actually to the word sustainability. Uh, so, yeah. you know, if, uh, which, you know, which itself is a reaction to other things, but we kind of got stuck on and, and sustainability got big because it's better than, <laughs> um, than the alternative. But we could go further. Her, yeah. her thing was basically, okay, so sustainability, if, you know, if, if we're not careful, it will just mean that we're keeping things the same and that we're surviving. Um, what if we were thriving? What mm -hmm. if we had thrivability? I've been, I've been thinking a lot about like the, the verbiage around like th there's, there's one tag that um, I hear on, uh, you know, NPR underwriting, you know, word, blips um and i'm trying to remember i think it's the annenberg or annie e. casey or some 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 foundation says um they are like in support of a just and verdant world and you know i don't i don't think that really <laughs> that's not the one but i really appreciate the effort to like to distill, you know, w what it is that the world should be and, and thriving is like, you know, thriving would fit in there, you know, a thriving, verdant, just world says, you know, people on the planet should be doing good <laughs> and, and being treated fairly. And um, so, yeah, I, I hear thrive and and, and walk plus, from all those words. Cool. Plus, I think it's just retarded that we're not doing that already. It's like, what a stupid way to run a species. Sorry for my vitriol. But, you know, I, I just think we got to um, really get our good dose of humble pie regarding you know, what we think is important, what we should spend our time doing. Uh, as to thriving, there's another dimension to it, which is as individuals, we don't look at whether we're thriving. It's just like we're, we're desperately trying to sustain ourselves and yeah, that I, you know, the same, it's the same problem on an individual basis as it is in a community and global basis. And uh, we're, we're just teaching ourselves to think unhealthy things and create habits that aren't healthy. We certainly, 
there's a lot of not thriving going on. <laughs> I like your answer, Pete and Mike and Stacy. Uh, they're all wonderful, uh, optimistic, um, and encouraging the way I hear them. So um, my hat's in the ring here. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to leave at the hour uh, to go watch Grace and Ken. That sounds like a good, a can good we, thing. Can we see if Vincent had anything he wanted to share about something else? Because I can. Can you leave a link to Grace and Ken's? Yeah, just put it in chat. Thanks. Huh. Thanks for asking, Stacy. I think uh, I don't have anything really burning, but just um, still feeling the need to close some <laughs> past open open loops to, to put it that way um, over opening new ones. So uh, I've been working on and thinking more about uh, Pete, what you mentioned with the kind of like personas and user stories. So I've been doing some work on that and uh, I made like a personas Airtable database that I've been um, working on. And then the only other update I have, which is kind of cool, is that I um, have gotten three like two-way syncs with Catalyst and Airtable going. So um, each one is kind of unique and set up, but once it's set up, it, it's kind of automated. So one, when somebody buys a ticket, if the um, ticket event has an Airtable base, it'll write the information, the payment information of that ticket into a payments table in the Airtable. Um, another one is in the tapestry when a new record is entered, it'll add it to the Airtable. And then the third one is um, this is kind of like the um, the meta schema. So when a new location is added, so for example, if somebody tags a, um, a community and says this community is from Long Beach, New York, and that's not a location that's in the database of like all the states, countries, cities, um, it'll add it as a new location in an Airtable database, which has kind of like the updated list of all the locations. So that's been fun um, getting some like two way syncing going and just playing around with the, the Airtable API a bit. Good progress, Vincent. Um, I, uh, Dawn of Everything, kind of um, one of the things, one of the outputs of Dawn of Everything book club, book circle is um, uh, references to other books. So I was gonna start uh, keeping a list of those someplace. I think Catalyst is a good place to do it. So I'll be doing that, I think. And, you know, and, and it's a start. Um, uh, maybe Vincent will kind of make books um, uh, a little bit more first class, or maybe there's another thing that should sync with Catalyst and, and add more. But beginning to of think about things like that, because we get a lot of book really, I mean, not a lot. We get um, a, a handfuls, but of really important books to know about. So. Um, and we, we've been doing that for a year and a half and, or two years, and they, they kind of just drift into the ether. So it'd be nice to keep track of them. Yeah, Pete, if, as, as you're um, cataloging things, if you feel free to shoot me a, a DM, if you're like, <laughs> this sucks, it <laughs> or like, <laughs> it needs an ISO field, it needs a field for like the book idea or, like, or something like that. Yeah, will do. Okay. Thanks, Vincent. Thanks, everybody. I'm heading out too. Pete. Oh, sorry. And he's gone. <laughs> and he's gone. I was hoping to catch him. <laughs> Problem.
See you guys. <laughs> Later, Michael. Yeah. Bye.